Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. What a bizarre title. And the game is just as crazy. That's just like an insane premise, but then the game just sort of forgets about it. I mean, this is about Turnip Boy getting a letter that he owes thousands of dollars in money to the government, and they're going to take his house. So the mayor sends him on a quest, which looking back really doesn't have anything to do with tax evasion. It's just going to random places to get items for him. It's not like you're paying off your taxes with each quest item. The whole tax evasion thing was kind of dropped almost as soon as it came up. Occasionally you'll see posters around saying, oh, walk out for this guy who's doing tax evasion. But other than that, they really don't talk about it much. That's not to say this isn't compelling. It's not bad. The tax evasion thing is what sets it up, and then it kind of goes even crazier. In its defense, I wasn't expecting a look into how life was created or the dangers of war, but it brings up these storylines quite well. Now, it does let you fill in the blanks when it comes to the story, which is nice, but when they give you all but two of the letters of the puzzle, it's fairly obvious what the answer is. However, the unexpected mystery that came up was quite refreshing from a game I thought was all about making money so you could pay off your debt. You get three different weapons in your adventure, and you can easily swap between them. You just use the R and L button to swap them. But also, it's very hard to figure out which one you're actually holding at the time. You can see something behind your back, but everything kind of looked the same. You can also access them in the menu, but it's easier just to use the buttons. Now, this is not a hard game. In fact, it's very forgiving. The boss fights could get tricky, but you'll be able to beat them after a couple tries. This is a very on-the-rails experience. You can backtrack to get collectibles, but they are sort of optional. There's a true ending with a real final boss if you care. They do open up an area after you beat the game that will help you get everything that you are missing. And after you get everything, you just fight the real final boss. So there is a little replayability. Now this game is short. You can 100% the title in about 3 hours. And if you don't care about that, you can finish this in about 2 hours. The story is very tightly packed. The dungeons and places you went to felt different. So you're going to enjoy the very brief time you have with it. There's also DLC you can access after you beat the game. It adds in roguelike gameplay and it was okay. It feels justifiably tacked on. It has you beating enemies and bosses until you fight the conductor of the train you're on. I can see someone enjoying this once. Now I wasn't sure if this was an issue with the Switch version, but I had issues with the frame rate drops. It would stop for a split second and jerk forward. It was really annoying. I was gonna really take this game to task until I saw in the options there was something called screen shake. Was this actually a bonus effect? You can adjust the screen shake up or even off, but it really didn't fix the jerkiness, but I'm still hesitant to say it was a bad port. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion was cute. It really wanted to be a lighthearted Zelda game, and it succeeded in that. If you're gonna play this, it's short enough to finish in one night. Nothing is dragged out, and it all moves in a very brisk pace. The biggest problem I have with this is the price of $14.99 normally. You should just buy this on sale. Even though I enjoyed my time with it, and just like another game I loved called To The Moon, it's not worth it at full price. It needs to be way cheaper, but when it's on sale, you should buy it. <laughs>